Hi, everyone. It's me, Heidi in Closet. And I just started a new series, High Tea in Closet, where I spill some tea and review All Stars 8. So make sure you join me at patreon.com slash Heidi and Patreon. See you there. Mm. <laughs> something's wrong with me Hello. Hello everyone It's me Heidi in Closet From RuPaul's Drag Race Season 12 And now All Stars 8 And now I am going to do a complete Review of the season <laughs> It's going to be All Stars 8 I clearly win so I'm of course going to be here for the long haul And we're going to talk about The season and how I Lived through the experiences of it the time I woke up, to, oh God, the thing is, it's first day. It's first day of the event. You know, you want to make sure you look correct. So you get up a little early than normal. So I remember my call time to leave the hotel and I had to be completely ready was 7 a.m. So I got up at 3.30 a.m. that morning, started getting myself together, painted. I People think this across my lid during that day is glitter. Those are individual stones placed across the whole out throughout the whole crease of the eye so i sat there meticulously taking itty bitty baby stones and just lining them up and putting them across the whole crease and i was like bitch my eyes feel heavy and um I, I just remember getting up super early but feeling great feeling good my outfit was really adorable it was um not my original outfit actually the outfit i wore at dragcon for the pink carpet the knight in shining armor look that was my original entrance look, but I couldn't figure out a way to get it to fit in my suitcase. I was like, you know what? It's okay. It's not meant to be. Just leave it here. So, yeah. So, and it was so funny because I was, I knew I was going to be the first to walk in. And it wasn't because they, they didn't really tell me anything. It's just like, you know, when, before we walk in, we get like a quick debrief or whatever. Like, yeah, just make sure you walk in, hit your mark, da, da, da. And then over, one of them was like, one of the people was like, in case you happen to be first to walk in, you know, just do what you got, you know, just take, speak, you know, do what you do. So, so in my head, I was like, oh, so I'm, I'm clearly first to walk in. <laughs> like, you wouldn't have said that if I wasn't going to be first to walk in. So I walked in fully knowing I was going to be first. So I was like, okay, I need something quick and catchy, really fast to say before I walk in. And I was like, okay, what's happening? I was like, and that's where it came from. I was like, perfect. It just, it just slipped out my mouth, really. So it was really good. Um. And then I had to wait, play the waiting game. That's the hard part is you have to play the, if you're first in. But the thing is, they only let the girls go in first because they know they can handle the room, I think. So, like, they knew, like, if they were going to send someone into the a, a cold room, who's going to start the fire? Clearly, it was highly involved. So, it was definitely a, a correct decision to have me walk in first, I believe. Um, I, it's crazy because I was walking around for a good five minutes by myself in the workroom. I was talking to Sarge. I was asking him where my child support was. Sarge is still there. He's, 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 I don't think he's ever going nowhere. Uh, Spearmint. Was it Spearmint? Wintergreen. Wintergreen. Uh, Peppermint's makeover. Sarge is still around. I, and I love him. He's, uh, he actually knows Darian, baby. He knows baby. Um, but yeah, I, I was talking to him about child support because I'm tired of taking care of his children. I was talking to the walls. I was it was it was a good time, but it was like a five minute wait and stuff. And then in walks Mrs. Kasha Davis, looking like Mrs. Kasha Davis do be looking. <laughs> I love Kasha. I call her Auntie Kasha. I don't. I haven't. Uh, I've, I just watched the episodes and they haven't shown me call her Auntie Kasha yet. So maybe they'll show it. I don't know. But um, I I don't like the shoe. <laughs> I did not like her shoe, but I, I it was it was kind of like similar intervals, like five to ten minutes, depending on how much we had to say. And the more the girls got in, the more a little bit more time we had. Whatever, so we we came through. We got Nasha coming in. We had um, who was after Nasha? Uh, Jim? No, Jimbo was much later. Jimbo, uh, Kahana coming in there calling us clowns. I was like, this bitch just called us clowns. I was gagged fully, um, and it was just really cute. I I wish they had left in the part when I said. Um, I said, when Candy walked in, I said she looked like Sherbert because of the color scheme that she was wearing. And then, what was it? There was one more time I said something. It was about, who was it? No, it wasn't I said something. It was Ojimba when she came in. It was so funny because she was sweating because she was in the trailers. And it's hot in the trailers. It's cold inside Drag Race, but on the outside, we're in, we're in California, so usually it's, cold, it's hot. So she was in a trailer. It was not necessarily... I mean, there's AC on them, but, you know, it's still, like, we're in California in the heat of in, in, a, in a little RV, so it's not going to be, like, the coolest. So she's in there, and then she just starts sweating. 
from her neck. Just makeup. She's in that full body and she's padded underneath too. So she's like body and cinch and all that stuff. And then like she's sweating from that and then the latex on top and she's sweating and then all of a sudden she just like pores start coming from her neck. And then I, I took out a sponge, a makeup sponge from my purse and I just started dabbing it on her neck and making sure she was like, let me blend you out, sis. But yeah, it was <laughs> it was like little stupid interactions like that that did. Oh, the one thing that they didn't leave in was, okay, so they actually kept like one piece of it. It was when uh, James walked in and she was like, me and Kahana are rivals. And, um, and, and Kahana was like, you want to go there? And it turned into like a whole big deal. Like it was, it ended up the girls were fighting about brunch. I was like, you know, we've hit the bottom of the barrel when the girls are coming to Drag Race fighting about drag brunch. Here we go. <laughs> Not this. Like we can't sit here and fight about brunch on on Drag Race. It's fine. And I was like, I was like, this is gonna eat up all the airtime. Not this. And they didn't even show it. I was like, good, good. But also, it kind of, it, it didn't make sense that they didn't show it, though, because, you know, with Kana and James both spinning in the top and stuff. So, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Some, some people have questions. We got questions about little things. Um, and then, we, you know, I'm having flashbacks and trauma to season 12 because on our first episode, we also had to do a fashion show with two looks. So I was like, oh, and that's where my headdress fell off. So I was nervous. I was like, okay, first day walk in, we got to do, do all this and stuff. I was nervous. <laughs> and I had to do my I had to do my porcelain doll look first. They wouldn't let me do the other look first. And did you know that those looks would be together? Yeah, yeah, we knew they were. We knew they were going to be together. It was like in a little email. They were like, "Hey, it, it, they didn't straight up tell us. They kind of just hinted. They said, just so you know, these looks should probably be near the top of your luggage or like packed together. You know, just like hint, be like, okay, well, I can clearly read between the lines. So that's gonna." Okay, because also it helped that on season 12, they did the same thing, be like, hey, have these look probably packed together. So I was like, um, that's okay. okay. So that's good. So I kind of already knew we were going to do like something like a fashion show on the first day. Because I was like, it, it just, it was reminiscent. It was just like, oh, I'm reliving that. And um, we did that. Uh, my first look was my old fame. Well, we're not going to go into that. We're not going to go into that. We're not going to go into that. We're going to go they changed up the name. We'll, we'll edit it out, but they changed up the name. But um, uh, what is it called now? A famous then. My famous then. <laughs> my famous then look was ba based off of a porcelain doll. My grandmother had porcelain dolls. There was this love seat that she had full of nothing but porcelain dolls, and there was most. There were mostly white ones, but there was this one black one that I saw that was like sitting towards the middle of it, and it, that was kind of the one that I was taking the reference for my look from because it was the one black doll. I was like, that's I see myself in that doll and stuff so I actually uh, we only had like 25 minutes to change from our entrance looks to our first row look and I, I had actually asked production ahead of time I was like because I, I, I got ahead of this thing I was like this sounds like we're going to be doing these the same day will I have time to switch my makeup in between they're like it'd be a short amount of time and it was 25 minutes but 25 minutes is not just for makeup 25 minutes is from one look to the other look so I actually had like 10 minutes to do that look so if I had more time, I think it would have been better, I think. But I think it turned out cute. It looked good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to change it back for the next one because I, they also wouldn't let me switch them. I, I asked could I do Old Fame, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Famous Then, after. But they were like, no. So I was like, okay, well, I'll have to paint my face white and then change my face back. That's fine. And, and my eye. That's why I kept my eye the same in the first look because I was like, I'm going to just change it for the second look. And then because I don't have to focus on this it was a lot. I don't know why I chose to do it, but I wanted to do it. And I wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it, so I did. It's obvious Kahana's Lil Nas X was clearly a, a, a slobber knocker. Um, I think not a slobber knocker. Uh, <laughs> um, I thought Kasha and uh, Kasha and Darian's looks, uh, their their famous now ones, were mysterious uh, at best. Uh, I was like, not Kasha doing. <laughs> You see everyone saying she was doing Liza Minnelli does Chris. She's, people were saying Chris Jenner is Lily Liza Minnelli with a cell phone. Yes, that was her famous now. She was doing Chris Jenner. And I'm like, what? <laughs> She's like a momager, apparently. And I was like, okay, but that's Liza with a cell phone. But okay, we love you, sis. And then Darian's Billie Eilish was mysterious. 
serious miss girl we were i remember all of us gathering and just kind of looking like because we have to get in line and lined up before we do the runways and stuff and we're all just standing there in our gorgeous outfits and like stuff like that and we just look and, and darius just <laughs> they're just hokey pokey and along and just billy eilish look i was like i'm like girl that's a risk i don't know so <laughs> I was like, I feel good about this episode. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I'm going. That's really what I thought. I was like, I'm definitely not going home for sure. Um, not on this day. Um, also, I really loved uh, Jessica's, uh, her Cleopatra moment was really beautiful. It was very old school drag, but still like, like gorgeously done and like well executed and put together. Oh, and the other standout, the last standout from this, um, uh, La La Ree. Her famous now, a brown a brown cat suit with uh with horribly felt letters. I'm just saying. And the thing is that they look better on camera than they did in person. That's all I'm gonna say. It looks even worse in person. Uh, but yeah, uh, the the really the really fans was um the cat suit matched um um and so now we got split into groups. Which I was like, okay, a performance yet again, reliving season twelve. Uh, I was like, great, and then I and then I got put in front of the choreography again. I was like, okay, great. And for these outfits, we were told to bring an outfit for each group. No, we were not. We were we were told to bring video vixen runway, not runway, just video vixen looks, and those were supposed to be like just outfits we were able to pull from for like these kind of performance challenges which is it's okay i guess but when you have something as specific as glam rock it kind of um it kind of makes it difficult because not everyone's going to have a glam rock look in their wardrobe like me personally i didn't have anything glam rock necessarily uh for for the outfit i wore during this challenge i was actually going to wear completely something completely different we were originally all going to think about wearing um different colors like since it was like glam rock 80s kind of vibe we were like maybe we all do like one color pop like that but we were like it's not coming together not cohesive enough so we ended up just doing all black because we all had something in our thing that we could make that was black and we could make work but it wasn't going to be black so it kind of worked out but also i think they should definitely get more direction for that if they're gonna because also not everyone's gonna have a disco look either like not everyone has disco looks you saw james um <laughs> And I said, th the thing is, I liked their group's song better. I think we had stronger performance overall. And I think that's what really um, allowed Kahana to snatch the win on our, on our, on our end. So, um, whose verses really stood out to me? James actually had a really good verse. I think her verse itself was funny. Did Not much was going on in it. Like, she was just, like, doing her little... <laughs> all the, those mannerisms that she does. So it was a lot going on, but it was like, at least the lyrics were funny. And I love that they couldn't even edit around how bad she was at the choreography. They was like, we kind of just have to leave. Yeah, we have to. There's no, because well, it was worse in part. <laughs> we got to do it two or three times. I can't remember exactly how many times it was, but two or three times we got to actually do the the performance. And yeah, they, you know, they end up using, they usually use the best cut, you know, because they want the show to be the best it can. But they showed what they showed, and those, you know, that just makes me think, ooh, that must have been even worse on the cutting room floor. It's <laughs> wild. Um, but she did have a good verse. And then also in their group, Lala's verse, and just performance overall was great. I'm <laughs> Their group stole a lot of our group's ideas. They don't show it, but... My group shot down so many of my ideas, and that's really why I went and sat down <laughs> on the stage. I was like, okay, it was like, y'all don't want my advice. Y'all appointed me to do the choreography, but then y'all don't want to take none of my choreography. So then I went and sat down. I was like, okay, I'm going to sit. And then, because I suggested, because originally we were going to start, like, middle stage, but that was not my original idea. I wanted to start from the back. As you saw, we did. Um, and then I also wanted, I was like, we don't all have to be on stage for the whole performance. Like, we could, like, not everyone have to know the whole choreography or whatever. And, like, we could have different entrances, because I originally was trying to use the stairs where Lala came in on for, not me, but for just someone in general. But they were not having that either. I was like, girls, y'all really 
y'all try to put me in a pickle. Y'all put me in lead of the choreography, but then don't want me to choreograph it. Wild. Um, but we got through it, thank God. They let me do what I do, and we did and we did it. We got there. Of course I still I, of course I took their feedback and stuff and was like, I'm not gonna sit there and try and choreograph the whole thing. We have very limited time, but I'm like, if y'all gonna put me in charge of the choreography, y'all gonna hear what I have to say and my say is gonna be the final say if um when it comes down to it. Or we can just not do choreography. And then we all gonna look stupid. So which is it? Um, and in the other group, but for standout and negatives, of course, I think Darian and Monica were on the lower end as well. I think, honestly, this, I stand by this, and I've already talked to James about this. I was like, James, this is why some of the girls, <laughs> some of the girls was ready to pick your lipstick immediately after this episode. Because the thing is, we were sitting on the stairs, watch us uh, sitting on the st um, in the chairs watching directly across from the stage and we can see like the dancing and we can see the formations and she's not hitting any of them and then she ends up in the top this week they're like what <laughs> everyone was like okay this is interesting this is interesting we're confused we're a bit, a bit wild and be we were a little confused. We all were a little confused, not gonna lie. And then I actually had a conversation with James at the airport after press week, and she, because we got to see the first episode, and she was like, Now it makes sense why y'all were feeling. I was like, Yeah. She's like, they, they. I was Like, yeah, James. Yeah, we, we can see it. Um, But we still love you, James. <laughs> zoom in on this, the zoom in right here you have of Candy. You can see uh, her belt that she has on for most of the performance. Um, they don't show where it's, when she does her high kick, it snaps off and almost hits me. And I end up having to scoot it off the stage so she doesn't have to pick it up and no one trips on it. That, But it's just funny because in some edit, some cuts of it, it's like you can see the sweatband where the belt was supposed to be. <laughs> I was like, look at the ass. Yeah. Uh, Runways, Famous Forever, was supposed to be like our signature drag look, basically. Like, if we immortalized ourselves, what would we envision ourselves being looking like and stuff? And I feel like a lot of the girls hit that nail on the head. Um, some... I wanted more from, I guess. Like, the ones I wanted more from was, like, Ale Alexis looks beautiful. I don't necessarily know if I would say that was her signature drag. Like, I, I, I know she does, like, if we were going to do signature drag, she should have came out in, like, an ugly blue dress and a little fur coat and called it a <laughs> And she would have been fine. She should have got something from the mall. And <laughs> She's probably like this. Can you talk about the, uh, the Us Fest moment? Oh, my God. This bitch won't say Emmy or a Tony or whatever. She's, I don't know what she's competing for. But, honey, she said, give me this screen time. I don't know what was going on. I was just sitting there. And I'm just like chilling in the chair. I'm just and then she and then we're talking. We're having this wonderful and emotional felt conversation with Monica. And then we love Alexis. Don't get us wrong, but Alexis is Alexis, and she does what she does. And she just she the thing is, we are all our own main character. But when Alexis is around, she swears she's everybody's main character. So she like, she has to say like she there's this thing about her where she has to say something. She ha like if she has something on her mind, she has to say it. She feels like she needs to say it. She's going to say it. Regardless, she has to wait 15 minutes and we are completely on a different conversation. She's going to bring it up then, or she's going to bring it up right then. It's like it's going to be said. Like there's no if ands or buts around it. Like that's not, that's, that's just what it is. I'm obsessed with her. It is. This, I, this is one of my it's unhinged. It's, it's just so, like we're like. So good. She, she's like, because she, thing is, she came back wanting to really show who who she was, and like she was the one to show that she's not how she came off as on season season nine. Now she's still a little delusional, of course. She is a nice person, though. There's, a, I don't know how much, uh, I I don't know if I can say that, but she is a nice person. <laughs> She is a nice person in in general. I don't know. There's a disconnect between her and the thing is, she makes good TV. Yes, but that is not her in in real life. Like her in real life is actually a much more thoughtful person and more like I think self aware. Well, 
I mean, well, the thing is, the, the parts of her that are the best TV, they're just showing you all of the parts of her yes. that are the best TV. There was other times so in this conversation. A, that's not a complete picture of who no, she is. No, she no, is no. A she is a lovely person. <laughs> However, she, we all have these parts to us, and you yeah. know, sometimes they just get magnified in front of 15 that's, cameras. So that's kind of Drag Race. I think, it is, I think it. that's the thing a lot of the The, the thing is, is Drag Race them. does take like certain aspects of you and expand on them and like blow them out of proportion and stuff. So, yeah, this is part of her, but that's not all of her. And it's definitely like they definitely was like, this is what's happening right now. And yeah, she did come back there and have that whole conversation with us. And it's not the last. I'm going to say that right now. It's, if they're going to keep showing them, it's definitely not the last. Trust me. Honey, there's this, there was this one. T- Girl. <laughs> this is so funny. But yeah, um, that was, it. Was, she was just going and letting us know how she was nervous about how she was going to be received being on the season. I think being in the top on the first episode and seeing how well the judges received her and like how we weren't ostracizing her or being mean to her or anything really was like touching her in a positive way and and I think it meant a lot to her and I feel like she, she's that girl she's gonna get something off her chest so she had to let us know in detail um she's also a very analytical person too like in my head I think Alexis talks like okay so I'm gonna give you an example for press week, we were at this interview and there was these lights here that they weren't using. It was just in like some um, some uh, work office space. So the lighting wasn't the best, but they had the lights there that they weren't using. And I think they weren't using it because they didn't want to make it super hot on us or whatever. And then Alexa sits down and she's like, are they going to come on the air? I mean, are they going to come on the lights? You know, if you could just move the lights over here. And she's like, <laughs> and she just starts like talking and just micromanaging everything and they're like yeah we're just gonna leave the lights off and she's like okay and then she gets up and goes talks to somebody else possibly about fixing the lights and she's just so over analytical about things and in my head I think she's like this is what my in my head this was the conversation she was having about those lights she was like now if you look at the lights right here if you move them just three inches over here it'll hit the highlight of my cheek and it'll shine three percent more and it'll give everything that everyone needs and everyone else will also be brighter too and it'll be every it'll be great for everyone else that's how i think she thinks it and i told her that and she said that yeah that's kind of is how i think i like i can feel that i can feel <laughs> i love that nut job i love her um also the first signature drags i feel like kahana's looks exquisite um, it's just, it's very Vegas. It's very, very Vegas. Um, can we do a side-by-side of Candy Muses and um, Poppy? <laughs> Poppy, if you're watching this, you know, armbands could have saved you. Armbands and nicer hair could have saved you because that's what Candy's wearing. <laughs> and then, of course, the final standout was the one and only beautiful Heidi and Closet. Um doing a fifth element reference because I did this actually this look is I, a lot of my looks I d- helped design myself and uh they all like mean something to me this look was a uh, reference from fifth element because a lot of people growing up said I acted like Chris Tucker from those movies and stuff and I just of course I was going to do like a leopard print because you know I had a good leprosy print and the, I would say these are kind of like like that pink is kind of like a signature pink purple is kind of like a, a Heidi color so I really put myself into this I was like I want it to look gorgeous I want it to be me I want it to be what I would give this is how I feel and this is what I'm saying you've really been consistent with your gap ring game you have that thank you, have you. on everything I've seen not everything really not everything and then actually these are the last gaps okay. after after next week's episode okay. these are the last gaps well, I take that back. I take that back. There's one more outfit that has a gap, but it's just the one more. Was, there's also like 40 looks we end up having to take, and it was like four of the five looks that I brought that had gaps on them were the first couple things I had to wear. I was like, <laughs> Michelle did say, is there going to be a gap on everything? When I was in the top next week, she's like, is there going to be a gap in everything? I was like, no, it's just kind of in the luck of the draw, sis. <laughs> I would put a gap on just a few things, and that's all I have to wear for the first couple episodes. Um, but then we go, uh, and Kasha's doing Kasha again. You know, we love Kasha here in this household. Um, but then we get to Untucked, and then the whole Alexis Michelle thing happens, and Lord have mercy. It was a good time, though. We were kicking in. Some of the girls, we were all talking and kicking in. We were like, we're kind of surprised that some of us are back here and not not in the top right now. And then I think it was, uh, was it Candy that said, 
Candy was like, it was either Candy or Nature. They were like, when they first started calling out the names, I was like, oh, these are going to be the tops. And then I, of course, pointed out, just so y'all are aware, they called my name first. So <laughs> if you thought someone was going to be in the top, it was definitely me then. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, also, I really love Jimbo's look too. Jimbo's look, she's always, out of all the girls, I think Jimbo's, Jimbo and me are the best at branding ourselves. So like, this is our brand. This is the kind of style that we do. Whereas others, they still like, they do them. Oh, and Kasha. Kasha definitely brands herself too. But, you know, when it comes to Kasha, well, there's always time for a mocktail. <laughs> I love that bitch. But then um, we had a conversation with the girls and Kiki and, um, oh, so I guess it's out now that, yeah, we're in an alliance. So me, Jimbo, and Candy are in an alliance. And um, it's funny because we actually had a, a method of voting of how we were going to vote and figure out if we were going to gag. Um, we were like, so if we're going to vote for one of the girls, so we were like, so we're going to break it down. Someone's going to have to say first girl, second girl during the conversation sometime. And then once we figured out who was the first girl and who was the second girl, we would do first girl. Like, we were, like, fixing something on our chin. Like, you know how drag queens always get, like, a little lipstick right here? We're like, this for first girl, this for second girl. And we tried it. And then the, the, it didn't work. The girls, the, they were like, what, what, what? They didn't show it was our little silent code to each other, but like the girls, the girls would let their uh, get swayed and stuff. But it was what it was. Um, and then we had to vote. Oh my god, I hate voting. Voting's like my least favorite thing in the world to do. Like I have to do it, of course, but I hated having to do. It. I was like, because it because I like I'm friends with all these. I was already friends with all these girls. So I'm like I'm literally like snatching one of my sister's dreams away. Like I, that sucks for me personally. I, I, so I felt horrible about doing that, but like it's part of the game. So you got to do it. But it definitely was uh, not my favorite part of the whole thing and the whole shebang. But I think overall, this was a great successful first episode to a season. And I look fabulous during all of it. So, you know, um, but thank y'all so much for coming and supporting. Um, we have so much more this season. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give y'all no spoilers. But this season's a wild one. Uh, it's it's Candy has dubbed this season as a return to seasons two, three, four, and five. So take from that what you infer. Um, but it's gonna be a great season. Stay tuned to see so much more from me and all the other ladies. Don't send hate to no one. If someone did something in an episode that you didn't like, and you know, instead of that, go buy one of the girls' merch that you do like, and have a blessed day. Love y'all.